It's hard to imagine the sun-drenched southern mecca city of Miami as anything but vibrant and full of life and culture. But there was a time when Miami was, well, just a swampy wilderness. The 1870s brought the first settlers, hopeful folks that believed it was a special place. And it was. It's called the Sunshine State after all. But Miami really got rolling in April of 1896 with the arrival of the first train on the Florida East Coast Railway that brought construction and other supplies, and the first passenger train that brought the industrious Henry M. Flagler. Flagler, of course, would become known as the father of Miami. He dredged a channel, built streets, set up the first water and power systems, and financed the first newspaper. When William Burdine, a retired Confederate Army officer, citrus grower, merchant, and entrepreneur arrived in Miami in 1898 with his son, they knew opportunity was calling. He bought a block on South Miami Avenue, just one block south of Flagler Street, in the newly developed and quickly expanding city of Miami. Together, they sold clothing out of their small shop more or less a trading post, mostly to construction workers, soldiers, and even some Native Americans. It was a good business, so good in fact, that the Burdines closed up their other store in Bartow and focused on the Miami market under the name Burdines and Sons. It would go on to be what some deemed the greatest department store Florida ever saw. As Miami grew, so did Burdines. They opened a larger shop on Flagler Avenue to accommodate their growing business. When William died in 1911, he left the store to his four sons. Son Roddy took over and moved the store downtown. This flagship store was five stories tall and was Miami's first tall building. It was the first with an elevator and the first with a steel beam superstructure. The 1920s brought a land boom in Florida, bringing more people and consequently more customers. Roddy knew how to market and how to bring people to Miami. He was a staunch promoter of Miami tourism, luring big names and big events to the city he helped to transform the Winter Palm Festival into the Orange Bowl Festival. In fact, the Orange Bowl Stadium, built in 1937, is called the Roddy Burdine Stadium. Burdines opened a second location on Miami Beach, the first business actually to take a chance across the bay. The risk was worth it, until the hurricane anyway. Tragically, it killed over a hundred people and shattered every single window in Burdine's department store. Burdine's was rebuilt in 1928 and they became a fashion authority. They were one of the first retailers in the South to buy clothes directly from Europe and advertise in a national fashion magazine. Burdines also had a rooftop canopy tea room where Miami's social elite could enjoy an afternoon orchestra concert, sip tea, and most importantly, be seen. They launched their own brand of clothing in 1929 called Sunshine Fashions, designed for the laid-back Florida lifestyle. Burdines was unique because clothing designers could test their spring and summer line early, months before the rest of the country got them. Locations opened in Fort Lauderdale and West Palm Beach, and their moniker of the Florida store, well that began to stick. Some travel writers even suggested vacationers bring empty bags and fill them at Burdines.
The 1950s was the heyday of downtown department stores, and Burdines was no different. Holidays brought an entire experience, complete with the rooftop circus in the sky that had circus acts and kid rides. Burdines is one of the first stores to offer personal services like beauty salons and travel departments. In 1956, Burdines merged with the Federated Department Stores. This allowed tremendous expansion, and Burdines popped up in cities and malls all across Florida in the following decades. In fact, the Burdines store that opened in the Dadelin Mall in 1971 was the largest suburban department store south of New York. In 1959, Burdines launched their celebrity fashion show, featuring music, dancing, charity fundraising, and new fashions. The iconic show ran for 15 years. It premiered collections by fashion icons like Charles of the Ritz and Estee Lauder. As malls rose in popularity in the 70s and 80s, Burdines was the place to shop in Florida. But eventually, consumers' tastes shifted and sales, they declined. By 2003, there were no Burdine family members left running the business and consolidation of stores seemed like the best way to keep the stores afloat. In 2004, Burdines became Burdines Macy's, and by the next year, the store was simply Macy's. While the name of Burdines was erased from the marquee, we remember the iconic store that it once was. Many believe Burdines was the greatest catalyst for Miami's growth in the 20th century. It was the true Florida store, and it represented everything we love about Florida. Sunshine, bright colors, and fun style. Thanks for watching, Memory Mountain. If you enjoyed this video, please click to subscribe to our channel and hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to tap the notification bell so you'll be one of the first to know when we post our next story looking back over the landscape of Americana.